Hello, and welcome to Throwback Thursday, where I take a look at a 90s film and give it a review. And today we are continuing the Power Rangers train with Turbo, a Power Rangers movie. It came out in 1997, and, well, unlike the first film, this film actually is actually canon to the rest of the series and bridges the gap between Zeo and Turbo. Does it do it well? We'll get to that. What is the story? Well, the story is that an alien wizard named Larigo is trying to escape an evil pirate witch lady named Divatox. So he runs to Earth to his dear friend Alpha 5. And soon the Rangers are called to action and to fight off Divatox. They need new powers, new Zords, and a new Ranger. So let's talk about this. Okay, this came out in 1997. Uh, unlike the first one, I did not go to see this in theaters. I waited until the VHS release. And you know what? For as bad as Power Rangers Turbo is, it's the worst season of Power Rangers bar none. Uh, I do think that the movie did a somewhat decent job of setting everything up. There's a few problems, though. Mostly... The necessity of having new powers. Why is it necessary to do that? Now, if you've seen this, you may be thinking, well, they need the ranger keys so they can go through the Nemesis Triangle to stop Divatox's plan. Yes. Yes. But, does that constitute new ranger powers? Not necessarily. Zoran could have just prepared the five keys to open the thing. That's it. Uh, as far as Ranger transitioning is between powers, I think this is the worst case of it. And it was actually kind of the, one of the final times. There's one more time after this where they switched actors onto the next season. And there's great explanations for each time those powers are changed. Like, why is Tommy now the White Ranger? Because his Green Ranger powers were gone. Why are they going all the way across the to another place to get... To get the to seek out and enjoy and get those powers because their regular powers are destroyed. Same thing in the movie. Why they're going to the, the island of or whatever the planet Fados because their powers were destroyed. Why are they now using the Zeo crystal? No more Mighty Morphin powers. And even after this, why are they going into space and why are they now space rangers? Because their turbo powers were destroyed. It works. Here, though, there's no real reason why they can't still use the Zero Range powers other than we gotta switch to the next Sentai. And it's not really a good transition. Also, there are some continuity problems with the show when you go between the show and the movie. Like Bulk and Skull, who at the end of Zio were going to move to Paris, I think, to become private detectives. But now, they're just back and in the junior police patrol with Lieutenant Stone. Okay. Then they will be turned into monkeys and then invisible later. Uh, Jason, despite not having left Angel Grove at the end of Zio, somehow comes back with Kimberly in this as a surprise. Despite the fact that he was still with the others at the end, Having no powers, but having a girlfriend. So the fact that he would stay in Angel Grove with that girlfriend makes no sense why he and he would come back with Kimberly. Because he wouldn't have gone anywhere. And yes, he and his girlfriend could have broken up between the end of Zio and the movie. But come on. They just got together. I don't know how that would work. but Come on. Uh, other than that... There's not really any other differences. Uh, I will I will say though that there is a uh, Hillary Shepard Turner who plays um, Diva Talks here actually was not in the first half of Turbo because she was pregnant. So she was replaced with Carol Hoyt, who was very similar to her, so it worked. And then she would switch back out. For the remainder of Turbo, I just wanted to mention that. The movie. Okay, let's talk about the big fat blue elephant in the room. Justin. 
Unlike most Power Rangers fans, I do not hate Justin. I just feel like like people judge him because he's well, he's a little annoying, and people some people you know are like, well, why does he have to? Why does he grow up when he morphs? And it's basically to match the Sentai footage. That's what it is. So they do it that way. Um, but why would you go from Rocky to that? Well, the big thing is that most of the cast were kind of ready to be done. Jason David Frank, for one, wanted to leave the show. But Saban and whatever convinced him to stay for half the season. And I think the show suffers for that, to be honest. Uh, as It's very obvious that they were kind of just there to shoot stuff. And then it gets a little bit Turbo gets Tubo. Turbo gets a little bit better once you switch out the cast and they're actually trying. But in the movie, I think they do a good job acting wise. They're not like just there for stuff. You know, Jason Dewar Frank always gives it his all. So even when he's barely trying, he's still trying. You know, you know, Jason Dewar Frank, he has a, a great, uh, you know, he he really cares about the the uh, Power Rangers franchise, or else he wouldn't be coming back. I know some of you might say, "Well, he charges an arm and a leg for for fucking autographs," but yeah, so what? That's what famous people do, man. Deal with it or not, it's up to you. Uh, but Justin as a character, he's not that bad. Is he necessary? No. And to be honest, I remember when I first saw the trailer for this, I thought it was the kid from the first film. But it's not. It's a different kid. And I was like, okay. He's like, guys, I'm the little Blue Ranger. I'm like, okay, kid Ranger, fine. That's cool. I was 10 years old at the time, so that was like prime age for me, you know. Uh, but, yeah. And then they're surprised after they morph and he gets really excited. He's a kid. Come on. And that's another continuity thing that I want to talk about is that Justin just comes out of nowhere. We haven't seen him before. We've never heard of him before. All of a sudden, he's just there. And yes, there are characters in Power Rangers that show up out of nowhere. But usually it makes sense, like transition to different characters in each season, or they introduce new characters in a way, but Justin's not even introduced. He's just there. And everybody already knows him. Much like Fred from the first movie, he was already there. But that was a movie, and it's out of continuity. This is in the continuity, and it's kind of just... He's kind of just thrown in there. Uh, and why Rocky got to leave, but the rest of them couldn't. Who knows? So let's talk about the main aspect of these movies. Power Rangers. And why... The Power Rangers are never actually in the movie for as long as they're supposed to, or they should be. It's a Power Rangers movie. You think it should be Power Rangers all the time. And the fact that this is actually original footage and not Sentai footage means there should be no limit on it. But each Power Rangers movie has a shortage of Power Rangers footage. Now, for the 2017 film, I can understand because that's CGI. But the first film, they morph maybe a half hour into this, into it. And then the powers are taken, and then they don't morph again until the end of the film. Here, it's very much the same thing. 35 minutes into the film, they morph, four of them, only to then demorph, get in their zords and drive. They show Justin morph for a second, and then they cut to them regular rest of the film until the climax, where they morph again and fight until towards the end. It just doesn't, you know... Why? You don't have... You're not restricted by Sentai footage, which means you can add more Power Rangers footage into the story. And I understand, that takes money. But it's not CGI. It's people in suits. Just do it. And I hate that. And we'll, I'll get more into that once I get talk about the 2017 film, because I have a lot to talk about with that movie, but... And there's one more thing that I want to talk about that kind of gets me is that the end, right? So the whole thing with Rocky is that he throws his back out 
while practicing for this karate tournament. And we cut to the end, there's just no explanation for why Jason is just part of it. Maybe there was a scene deleted or something, but there's just nothing. Nothing at all, he's just there. And another thing that bugs me is that Tommy is wearing a white bandana. He's the Red Ranger now. He should be wearing a red bandana. It bugs me a little bit, but it's not the first time there have been errors. But this is a movie. In the show, there were scenes put in where Tommy was still wearing green, even though he was the White Ranger. So it was... You know, pre-made footage that they mixed with Sentai footage, even though it was from before he was actually White Ranger. I don't know. But here it's a movie. Should we wearing red? If Adam gets to wear a green bandana, why not? And, and there was going to be a scene where Tommy said, hey, we need a third. You know, but there's no real connection. I mean, it's obvious because it's going to be Justin. Who knows? Uh... Other than that, I really like the HD transfer on this. Watching it, it's beautiful HD transfer, especially the scenes where they're in like Africa or Australia, wherever it is, is good. Um, there's a scene that was on the VHS box that shows fire, just not in the in the finished film. I just want to mention that. Uh, overall, this movie's not that bad. I still enjoy. I enjoy watching this more than I do the TV series version. Of the turbo power of the power engine turbo, but yeah, uh, Bulk and Skull, they're themselves, not much to say there. They're taken hostage, they're turned into Swedish people. You are speaking to us. My name is Antonio Bantano. Other than that, this movie's pretty good. I'm gonna give it eight out of ten. I think it's decent, it's not as good as the first one, obviously, but. Still good. So what are your thoughts on Turbo Power Rangers? Movie? Let me know in the comments below. Make sure to like, share, and subscribe. Thank you for watching. I've been Scotty. I'll see you in the next one.